So this is ELC 131, Circuit Analysis 1. And what we're going to talk about are voltage dividers. Now, why do we connect resistors in series? Well, there's a couple of reasons. And the first is we connect resistors in series in order to limit current. And the second reason that we connect resistors in series is to divide a voltage up into parts. Now, these are really the same thing. It's just a different way of looking at the reason we, we connect resistors in series. So let's look at an example. So we've got some load, and this load requires 5 volts to be applied. And when 5 volts are applied to the load, this load will draw a current of 100 milliamps. Now, this load could be an Arduino. It could be a Raspberry Pi. It could be some digital logic circuits you, that you have constructed. But regardless, it requires only 5 volts. And again, when 5 volts are applied, it will draw 100 milliamps of current. So we can really say that this load has a resistance calculated by Ohm's law. Oh, let's do it the right way. V load divided by R load. 5 volts divided by 100 milliamps is 50 ohms. So to us, this load represents a 50 ohm resistance. Now, what if our only available source of voltage is a 12 volt source? And this 12 volts could come, of course, from a battery. It could come from a DC power supply. But our only available voltage source is 12 volts. Can I connect this 12 volt source directly to the load? And the answer is probably not. If I connect this 12 volt source directly to the load, then the current through the load. V source divided by R load, 12 volts divided by 50 ohms gives us a current of 240 milliamps. And this large of a current could damage or destroy the load. So how do we limit the current through the load? Well, we have to add a resistor in series. Now, we know that the total resistance, RT, equals V source divided by I. And in this case, our source voltage is 12 volts. Our current is 100 milliamps. So we need a total resistance of 120 ohms. So in order to limit the current to 100 milliamps, we know the total resistance equals R plus R load. And the total resistance is 120 ohms. The load resistance is 50 ohms. Oops, need a minus sign there. So the value of resistance required is 70 ohms. Now, when we're selecting resistors, we cannot purchase a 70 ohm resistor. That standard value resistors we would have to select either 
a 68 ohm resistor or 75. So a 68 ohm resistor will be our closest standard value of resistor to select from. So by placing a 70 ohm resistor here, or in this case, 68 ohms, we will limit the current to be approximately 100 milliamps. Now, that's not all we need to know about the resistor. We also need to know its power rating. Because if we put too small of a power rating here, the resistor may overheat and either change its value or open due to excessive power dissipation. So with our resistor, we know that P equals I squared times R, 100 milliamps squared times 68 ohms. Um, no. P equals V times I equals 7 volts times 100 milliamps equals 700 milliwatts. So we would have to purchase a 1 watt resistor or use a 1 watt resistor. for this application. Our power ratings come in eighth watt, quarter watt, half watt, one watt, two watts, three watts, five watts, and other values. But the one watt standard value would be the minimum power rating for the resistor. Now, approaching this problem from another direction, We could look at using resistors in series to divide voltage. Now we know in this circuit that V source equals VR plus V load. So we know that the resistive voltage will be 12 volts minus 5 volts or 7 volts. And the value of resistance equals VR over I, 7 volts divided by 100 milliamps, gives us 70 ohms. Again, our closest standard value is 68 ohms. So it doesn't matter whether we approach the problem by thinking about what value of resistance is required to limit the current or what value of resistance is required to divide this 12 volts up into a 6 volt piece and a 5 volt piece, the result is the same. It's just a matter of perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's look at an example of voltage division that occurs really unknowingly. And I have a 120 volt source, such as we commonly have in our households. And then way over here, I have a load that has a value of 8 ohms. Now, this load could be a motor, it could be a heater, it could be incandescent lamps. It doesn't matter what it is, but my load has a resistance value of 8 ohms. And connected from the source to the load is an extension cord that's 100 feet of 16 gauge conductor, a typical drop cord. Now, 
this length of resistance has approximately 0.4 ohms of resistance. So when current flows to that load and then back to the source, it will see a combined resistance of approximately 0.8 ohms. And my question is, how many volts will be applied to the load? Will it be all 120? No, because we have, through the use of this 100 foot of extension cord, created a series circuit. So the circuit that the load sees is a 120 volt source and RW of 0.8 ohms and a load resistance of 8 ohms. Now, the voltage that's available at the load can be calculated using the voltage divider formula or rule which is V source times R load divided by RW plus R load. 120 volts times 8 ohms divided by 0.8 ohms plus 8 ohms gives us approximately 109 volts. So by connecting this 100 foot 16 gauge extension cord to the 8 ohm load, note that the voltage available at the load drops to 109 volts.